important, and I really appreciate uh, the sign petitions. It's going to save us a lot of money, and uh, it shows that we have some support too. But I think it's important. It's kind of a pain. They've, they've up the signature requirement. Uh, it used to be 150 signatures in lieu of paying filings, and so you know they didn't double it. They they increased it to 10,000. So so, and it sounds like a lot. It is, but basically it's pay to play. So you can write them a check for 2,800 bucks. Or 2600 bucks in my case, or get some signatures, or a combination of both. So I'm happy to report I've, I've raised enough money already for my filing fee, uh, so I'll definitely be on the ballot. And all, all these signatures now will just conserve our resources that we can use for other things, other aspects of the campaign. Um, for instance, to be, uh, to have a complete candidate ballot <coughs> statement, uh, 250 words, it costs over $6,000. They, they charge the candidates $25 a word for the ballot statement. So you'd think they'd just kind of throw that in, but they don't. Uh, so that's the next uh, fundraising hurdle. Well, each of our candidates will need to raise $6,000 uh, mm -hmm. to, just, to, just to have a little paragraph in the, uh, in the voter guide. It's a little insane, but it's America, so. <laughs> All right, so my pre-prepared thing. Um, last time I spoke from my heart, and it was great, but a little rambly, so I've got some pre-prepared statements. Um, again, I'm David Curtis, I'm the Green Party candidate for Secretary of State, and uh, I'm finding many people don't really know what the Secretary of State does. Uh, as I'm getting signatures, many people don't know that it's an elected position, uh, but it is in, in California. It seems like it should be maybe a nonpartisan position because they handle the elections, uh, but, but you can actually be a partisan and be the Secretary of State, so that's what I'm trying to do. Um, Deborah Bowen has been uh, the, the Secretary of State for two terms now. She's uh, term limited and she can't run again, so it's an open seat. Um, there are currently 12 people have filed a tent in the race, so it's queuing up. Um, six to seven are actively campaigning. Uh, right now, there's uh, there's three three or four Democrats. There's a Republican and a former Republican, and I'm the only, right now I'm the only minor party candidate. Um, and uh, I've been collaborating with some of the other minor parties uh, just to keep touch with them to see if they're going to run anyone. And, and uh, other minor parties are getting behind my candidacy. So uh, Peace and Freedom strategically decided not to run a candidate and and to allow mine to go forward. Um, and and I you know, I'm even talking to candidate, uh, parties that are sort of opposite spectrum from the Greens. Uh, the Libertarian Party, which is pretty uh, pretty, it's a different party than the Greens. Um, they've been incredibly supportive. Uh, I've I've received the endorsement of both Richard Winger and uh, Christina Tobin of Free and Equal. Um, and, and also the Libertarians have held off running a candidate because they knew uh, a year ago that I was running. So, so, so the minor parties are trying to stick together in this, and they know that we've got a lot of obstacles with the top two. It's likely that any of our candidates will be able to make it through the top two. I, I hope we can. It, it'll be how effective we can break through the media, typically the media blackout. Um, I've already got through the media blackout a little bit. I got the first, uh, first TV coverage this week, uh, Sacramento Television, uh, Channel 3, I think, NBC. So they, um, at first they excluded me on the 10th, and then I, I started twittering at them like crazy, and they said, well, when are you available in Sacramento? And I said, T tomorrow. And so I went, to, I went and they gave me an interview. So, wow. so that, that's what it's going to take if we, um, this half, every time we're excluded, hopefully they'll include us, but every time we're excluded, we just get in their face in a nice way and say, hey, here I am, when are you available? Mm -hmm. you know, and, that's, that's, and, and Laura Wells uh, you know, broke the ice in 2010. Uh, she was getting coverage. Uh, Jill Stein smashed through pretty well in the presidency uh, campaign. So, so you know, it's available. They're, they're at least willing to include us now. So, um, uh, just some background, uh, I've worked in architecture for 20 years and uh, I became more political in the 2000s. Uh, I discovered the Green Party because of Ralph Nader running for president in 2000. In uh, 2006, I advised a uh, governor's campaign in Nevada. In 2010, I ran for my first office as a Green uh, and sort of learned, learned the ropes. And then I've been, I've been in uh, California since uh, 2011. Uh, my partner's a lawyer. She just ran for a district race, and she's advising on the campaign. She was the primary fundraiser for Ralph Nader in 2000, so she's helping out with my campaign. Um, 
Yeah, I've worked in architecture. Um, I also have an art background. Uh, I worked for a nonprofit art collective in Nevada for four years. I volunteered for them. And then I, was, I served as president of their board of directors. Um, and then I uh, had my own art gallery and studio there. And then I've been, I've been in the Bay Area for almost three years now, just trying to replicate you know, some of the things I've been doing in Nevada. Um, OK, so what, what's the big deal with Secretary of State? It isn't on most people's radar. Um, I think there's an opportunity with the debates. Um, <clears throat> the state statutes right now do not require public debates for candidates. There's no provision in the state statute. So what happens is, if they even bother to have a debate, it's usually a private event, and they only include Tweedledee and Tweedledum. And then everyone else is excluded, uh, as was graphically illustrated by Laura Wells' uh, candidacy when she tried to attend a debate. She was running for governor, and she was basically arrested and handcuffed. So, um, you know. So I'd like to change that. Uh, Secretary of State could establish policy at the statewide level, this basic concept, that if you're running for office, you have to be in a public debate, all the candidates have to be in the debate. That I would just make that policy at the state level. Um, you know, I wouldn't wait on the legislature to get around to doing it. Um, uh, also, I'm looking at how business licensing at the state level can integrate with environmental protection. Because a lot of people see them as at odds. You know, either you're pro-business or you're pro-environment. Well, I want to integrate both of them because if we integrate it into the process, then the businesses we wind up with are going to be healthy for the environment and they're going to stay in business longer. So, so that's one of the, one of the roles. Um, Secretary of State receives all the requests for business licensing. So all that, all that energy goes to their office. They, they process a lot of data. Um, they have to maintain the uh, voter list. Uh, they, they attempted to come up with a solution for a statewide voter data uh, list that's accessible to everyone and functional. And they haven't got that yet. Uh, what we have right now is a cobbed together set of county databases. Each county maintains their own data. And there, so there's no like comprehensive statewide list that everyone can pull from across the state. So, so whoever gets elected, there's seven people running, is going to have to invent what that's going to be implemented. Um, the last time they tried to do a vendor situation, when they put the call out for a vendor, they so narrowly defined it that basically only one vendor was even trying to do it. And then they tried to initiate the, uh, the solution and failed. And they, they burned through a few million dollars and it didn't work. So, so the next person is going to have to come up with you know, putting that ask out again. Um, what, what I would do is I'd have a workshop and I'd have multiple vendors at the workshop. I'd have stakeholders within the officers. The office, uh, Secretary of State's office has grown from 300 people to 500 people. So um, they're dealing with a lot of data processing. The legislature keeps inventing new roles for them, new reports that they're obligated to, uh, to perform. So, so the office is growing and growing. The database problem is growing and growing. So, so whoever's in that office has to be able to you know, deal with that complexity and, and design solutions for it. Um, greens have been seriously impacted by t the top two problem. Um, it's interesting, we have sort of two elections going on. We've got a primary where basically anyone can run. Anyone who's willing to pay some money and suffer slings and arrows and, and you know, they can be in the primary. Um, the problem is only the top two vote getters go on to the general election. So there's two elections. There's the fake inclusive one, and then the general election where it's Tweedledee and Tweedledum. And there's market forces at work. Um, a year before you decide to be a candidate, the media, the corporate media, looks at your cash on hand. And if you have $100,000, you are a quote unquote real candidate. And that means you will get covered on TV and the newspaper, magazines, all the bells and whistles because they know you're going to buy ads. So, so that, that's what happens sort of behind the scenes. So, so right now, the Secretary of State's race, even though it's sort of not on anyone's radar, people don't even know it's an elected position, what does it even do? There's a couple candidates that have all the bells and whistles. And then there's the rest of us. Um, but, but we're lucky. This time, six or seven really good people showed up. So there's a good field of candidates. Um, I'm, I, I've approached the uh, League of Women Voters, and I've been, I'm begging them to host an event. 
with all, all of the candidates, and hopefully all the candidates will agree to do that. They seem to be willing. Um, I, I've been on a panel discussion so far with uh, one of the candidates, uh, Leland Yi, and also Derek Cressman, and myself, we were in Berkeley together. So, so some of the candidates are willing to appear with the green, um, and, I, and I think I'm sort of quote unquote normal looking enough that I won't scare them off. So, yeah, I can put on ties and stuff. Um, okay, um, so what